Hi, and welcome to another episode of 12 Vlogs. Corby and I are happy to see you today. So, just as a slight matter of, I guess, warning, that this video is about toilet training. It's about how you would set up a litter box for an indoor dog. It is not maybe a correct way how to do it, but it is the way that is correct for us. I want to get a few things out of the way real quick. Um, first off, there there will be poop and uh, bodily fluids from a dog in the video. So if that's going to bother you, I understand completely. And please enjoy one of our other videos that we have for you to watch. If it doesn't bother you, then please enjoy what we have arranged for you today. <coughs> uh, I hope to make it very informative. And, uh, well, hopefully using what we're going to talk about, you'll be able to set yourself up with, you know, a an indoor potty area for your small breed dog. Um, like I said, that we will be talking with poop or about poop and so um i want to get out of the way that i don't want any crappy jokes i don't want our channel to be number two i'm just gonna squeeze out and pinch off a few facts about what we're doing give you some good tips but we're gonna try not to do anything too stinky here tonight so um with this topic, it's important to remember that everybody poops. But what exactly does poop mean? It's actually a carefully organized co code, so watch closely. Poop is puppies or others poop. You are such a dork. What do, I don't understand, what do patties have to do with this? Okay, so with, there's Kiki, so with potty training and stuff for your dog, um, we are going to go ahead and give him his treat because this video is going to be a little bit of a longer one. Um, it, actually this video probably might even run over the half hour mark, um, if, YouTube will let us post one that's that long, which I hope it will, because otherwise you won't see this video till next week, because once I change it, I'm not putting dirty stuff back in his toilet to refilm it. I'm, I don't want to handle this stuff more than I have to. But, while I am explaining the stuff that you will need to get started, and a little bit of background information, I'm going to let him start the process of making poop. So, there's your treat all right so he's enjoying his treat so with um what we have found that works best for us which you need to have i guess a little background information on um the whole process of before we were pooping. So first off, yes, there is poop in his tray. So let's get it out of the way right now. And you're going to see poop now. Okay, so there it is. That's as bad as it is. There's poop and there's pee. You can see it all. So, now that that's out of the way. He, when we got him, he, the, the breeder that was... Um, raising him till we took him over had already started him going on potty pads. That's these things. And as he got older and realized, hey, these things are fun and they're chewable, as he was teething and whatnot, he would start to chew on it. And then it got to the point where it was so bad 
that in the middle of the night, we were worried that he wouldn't be able to make it through the night without choking on the pad because he was chewing it to the point where he was getting some of the cottony, the, the white cottony stuff off and he was tearing the plastic. So with, with that came a problem because when we cover him at night, we have him in his pen here and we put the blanket down like that and we can't see what's going on inside. This whole thing is his bachelor pad. I hope that's enough room for him for overnight. And then during the day, he gets, you know, all of the yard. Plus, he can go in there whenever he wants. Well, and we let him out um, of the pen, too. Yeah, and then when we're able to actually be with him, you know, so, like, the cats don't pick on him and stuff like that, he gets to come out, he sits on our laps, he goes for walks, you know, I mean, he has a normal dog's life. He doesn't just stay in here. Um, but we have never used the crate, and that's one of the first things. Don't use the crate as punishment, because if you want him to go potty in the crate and not have to have that on your floor, out in the living room or things like that, you don't want... Um, you know, you don't want him to view the whole crate area as a bad uh, place to be. So this has never been a punishment. It's always just been, this is my spot where I can get away if I want to. But, back to him chewing his pads. So he would chew his pads, chew pieces off, and we didn't feel comfortable covering him up at night because we were worried that he was going to choke on the stuff during the night. So... We found this tray. The tray he had previously didn't have that um, that mesh top on it, that uh, that crisscross grid. It didn't have that, so it was just the outer ring, and it would clamp the it would clamp the pad down, but the whole center was exposed for him to chew at and pull up the fibers off. So finding this, this was sixty dollars. And it was at PetSmart, I believe. PetSmart, yes. Um, so finding that, because the pad is actually underneath there, we got really lucky because now he can't get to it at all. And you see this part here is outside of his pen, and so he can't get to that either. So what you would need, for what we found we needed... For this was not only does he need the uh, potty tray but we have this Lipton tea container and a grocery bag goes in there and for the week that's where his poopoos go we you know just we just pick it up with a paper towel and put it in there and close it up and that keeps the smell from coming out into the house but yet it makes it easy and in the bottom of there I have fresh scent cat litter in the bottom that sits under the bag it sits outside the bag but it's um, Arm & Hammer brand so it absorbs the odors so the odors don't come into the house and it's kind of like it's kind of like a diaper genie but for dogs I guess um, I need to help the dog real quick finish his snack because Usually, as you know from watching the videos, I'm holding it for him. And so he's just kind of pushing it around trying to get it. So give me one second. Okay. Sorry about that if you heard all that noise back there. Um, so now we're going to enter the lion's den. Um, he's excited right now, so he's making some of his noises. Now, what I do, because it's just easier to keep him out of the way... And later I'll be using something in there that I don't necessarily want him drinking. I just close up the uh, the pen so he it makes a smaller area just for this time. It'll be fine. And here we are. Here's what we're dealing with. So first things first, let's get the offender out of the way. Mm -hmm. 
I try to use as little paper towel as possible because that stuff is precious right now. Okay, so there's that and a little bit more. There we go. So there. Now, no more Mr. Trunkies. Alright, so you've seen, I, I won't show you inside the bucket, but there is the paper towel with the um, offender locked away in solitude uh, deep inside. So, now, the next thing we do is I lift this up. And I take this out. This pad out here is for um, when he stands in here to go to the bathroom, he'll raise his leg. And when he raises his leg, he pees out. And so it doesn't get on the hardwood. We have this. So this also... Gets to go in here. So now that's in there. See, there's there's that. Now you can't see anything nasty inside. So there's the pee pad in there. The next thing I do is it unclips from there. So you get the ring up there. And you got the, this is the grid I was talking about. He, I don't know why, he poops in this corner and he pees in this corner. All the rest of this just gets contaminated from it running from this corner and absorbing into the pad. So, I lift this up. And... There's his, there's his pee. I fold it, fold it, and there it's all contained, and that goes in there. Now, another thing I do, you see that build up there? That smells. So, I use... Apple cider vinegar. I'm not sponsored by Kurtz, but this is his own bottle of vinegar. Um, he's over a year old now, and so that's how long this has lasted. We actually got this from someone, and it was about up to here, you know, maybe the top of the label. So he's used about that much in a year. Um, so, now, yes, it's true that this smells as well, but I just pour a little out, and then I'll take another paper towel, absorb this, and I'll go around scrubbing the the area. Um, I don't know if you notice or not, but the, for some reason, the phone is absorb, uh, is trying to pick up a face in the toilet bay so I don't know if it's zooming in clear on other spots of it but it's moving all around so I don't know what's happened but uh, anyhow still going back to scrubbing this and this is a lot easier now you won't get the color up um, every six months I will go out and take it outside and I will scrub it down really good in the yard with a brush and everything. We're just wanting to saturate that uh, yellow 
uh, area there so that it deodorizes it. And of course you want to wash your hands when you're done with this, obviously, but I shouldn't have to say it, but you never know with some people nowadays. So, uh, so there's that. Um, now, these pads, we have two different kinds here, and that's only because Amazon had a great deal on these, and so these get used, this gets used outside because these were more expensive than these. So with this, I fold it up so that I fold it so the plastic is against the plastic. Because after learning his potty behavior, I know where he's going to go to the bathroom. His, his stool pigeons don't go anywhere other than this corner. And he never has loose stool. So I never have to worry about it coming through. So I just put... There you go. Now I can show you. I'm sorry. Uh, so I usually just put this here like this. And there you go. It's folded up. It's folded so that there's absorbent on the top on the bottom and even inside all the plastic is against the plastic of the thing the blue um this is leak proof but it still allows there to be a lot of good absorbent uh area right here it's about surface area so with all the peeing that he'll do it'll go in here run down and before it even pools in the tray it'll seep inside and everything and so that's you know just basically why I do that so that it takes longer before it gets to the tray so then I put this back down you see how that just covers that and then I put this back down I put this back down all right there we go. Get that like that. That like that. It locks into... It's got... It looks like steps on the underside of it. And the little latch grabs onto each step and makes it tighter with each one that goes. So I can have a really thick pad on there. Or a not so thick pad. So that makes it very handy. And then here is the next layer of pad. Remember when I said he likes to pee outside of the pen? Yeah, it doesn't always go outside. It'll go under his tray, and then it'll run back around his food bowl, run back around his water bowl, and run back and get soaked up by his bed. And then we'll notice that he's starting to smell real bad like pee, and we'll be like, what's going on? And come to find out, it's leaking underneath. So believe it or not, this is the one underneath gets changed every, well, it gets changed more often because the one inside has the lip. So that gets, the one inside gets changed every week. This, depending on how bad it is, doesn't get changed every week. Just if there's pee on the outside of it, we do. But this one gets pee all the time. So see, there's, there's that. And then this goes in here. And again, now all of his messy pads are in the thing there. So with this one, I unfold it. I hope to give you guys some time to watch him play before I gotta wrap this up. If I can. He's humping Mr. Bear. Do not mess him Okay, so here it is. Same folding pattern, but I've got to pour some vinegar down. 
pour some vinegar on me. Okay. Sure, you don't sing for me, but you'll sing for strangers. That's not singing, that's being a jackass. Anyways, um, so here's me distinking his pen. We also found out by accident that he likes the taste of vinegar. <laughs> so now I've got to make sure it's dry. Otherwise he wanders around his pen licking the floor. So see how this is discolored here? I need to take that out. It's about time. You know, like you can see I'm getting, you know, little balls of it up though. And then that goes in the bucket. And one more. I know, this is so exciting, isn't it, watching me clean my thing? But we've actually had a question from someone. They were asking me. Um, well, they weren't really asking. They were just saying that they were thinking about getting a dog. A smaller, mid-sized to smaller breed dog. And they were saying that, you know, they were thinking about potty training for indoors and kind of wondering about how that would be done so this is all the work that goes into indoor potty training but it's worth it now even though it's a lot of work well it's not a lot of work that's not true it's not a lot of work it's just not pleasant work so here this is again folded in the way where the blues against the blue the whites inside the whites outside the whites on the bottom And then I lay this back down, make sure none of the pad is showing. And there you go, he's ready inside. Now out here, okay, I am done with the vinegar because the whole place is smelling like vinegar. I was going to make a bad joke, but I guess I shouldn't. Anyways, um, so... There's that, and then uh, putting the lid on this, so there, now that's lit it off, so that can't smell anymore, and now I'm going to take this, open it up, and I grab it here by the center, crease it here and then for this part I'm going to have to set it down for just a second so I'll pause it so I don't show you nothing but black and I'll be right back after I get it slid under I'm only lifting this up but it takes two hands to do it all right and through the magic of YouTube there's the pee pad to soak up any accidents outside and every time we do this, um, it's Wednesday night, and Wednesday night is our garbage night. And so when our garbage goes out, so does our animal waste. And so, you know, he has his, his bed refolded, his burrowing blankets put in there nice, and, you know, his water gets freshened up all that fun stuff so he's ready to get in there and to uh be upset that i was in his pen and to tear it up and make a mess and put his blankets back in his water because he loves putting his blankets in his water for me to have to wash his water bowl out and dry the blankets or 
wash and dry the blankets. But, so anyways, there's that. So now I will close the pin up. I'll lay back down. Well, actually, I won't close the pin. I'll just open it, and I'll be highlighting Corby for a bit, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how we trained him to where he doesn't go anywhere but this. All right, and here I am back inside, and Corby's excited, and you know, just here we are. Okay, so see if I can keep my concentration of talking to you while I play with him. Um, so, uh, to potty train him, like I said, the breeder, breeder, um, I want to say with quotations because we thought they were more reputable than what we found out they were, but that's a whole nother story and while we're thankful to have him he was not it was a backyard breeder and we didn't know we thought it was someone that took more care and um credit with what they're doing but anyway how that's neither here or now we have our wonderful precious dog and we're madly in love with him so but the breeder had him uh, like I said, already going on the potty pads uh, from the time he was a puppy. So that worked really well for us. But to reinforce it, you know, we would, if he would miss, you know, because all animals miss, even when they're adults, they can miss just based on if they get excited from company coming over or a loud noise or... Uh, yeah, they're playing, don't want to stop. Even like 4th of July fireworks, if you you have a nervous dog, that can cause them to piddle on the floor. It can cause them to accidentally uh, poo where they're not supposed to. Things like that, you know, it, it happens. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so when, when, they, when they miss, um, we just, you know, we'll take it with the... You want to want to play? Oh, oh. So when they miss, we will pick it up and we'll just lay it in the toilet and we'll say potty in the box. And then the next time he goes potty in the box, we would make sure we had a treat and then give it to him for him for him going. And after times of you know, um, I don't know what else to call it other than catching him be good um, when he's going potty in the correct place, then we, um, then we treat him, and he learns that's the expected behavior. So, yeah, that's, uh, oh, oh, yeah, it takes a while. Um, now they do have sprays. There are two different sprays you can get, which we did use, um, we use the sprays for him as well. One of them is a spray that you put where you want him to go. And then another one... Okay, so the one that you put where you want him to go, it's... Uh, and I don't have any of these now. I apologize because we we don't need them anymore. So, you know, they, they have them at the pet stores um, down the potty aisle. Um, but the one is a spray that has an enzyme that makes your dog want to go to the bathroom on it. it on their pad. And then, so you would spray it on their pad, or even, you can even use it for outside. Excuse me, I had kind of a hiccup. You're not supposed to bring your blanket out, silly. Anyways, um, so you can use one inside the, the... One where you want him to go, you can use it inside, or you can even use it outdoors. Like if you want him to go on this tree, or they got little fire hydrants, you can put on a post into the ground and it teaches them where to go. Um, you can spray that with it, and you know it's just an enzyme that for some reason makes them want to go there. And then they have another one. I got your tail. I got your tail. What you gonna do? Chew it off. You got to chew it off to get it. Um, so. Then the other spray is to um, 
remove the enzyme. So it's got a bacteria in it that eats the enzyme, and then it makes it so that the dog doesn't smell the last place that they went or where they had an accident, and that can make it easier. It doesn't get rid of them going outside, but it makes it easier. So, yeah, so then every time you catch him doing good, you reward him, but you don't punish. Punishing when they do bad isn't... They used to think long ago, um, you know, you could squirt your dog or uh, you'd put their nose in it or, uh, you know, even smack them with a newspaper. Um, not really to hit them. Not, the point wasn't hitting them with the newspaper. It's supposed to be the sound the newspaper made or even shaking a can with coins in it or something. Those aren't really effective, they found out anymore. So you more so want to just give positive reinforcement. Um, you know, and you, you just clean up the mess. Messes happen, you know. I mean, I'm sure you've had to go and haven't made it before. I know... You know, I have in the past when I was learning, when it was all new, and, you know, so, I mean, it, it happens, and, you know, when your your child is toilet training, you know, they have accidents, too, sometimes, even after they've gone successfully a couple of times, they just mess up. It's It's been quite a long time since he's messed up, but you never know what could spawn a mess up. So, I mean... You know that's that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, if you uh, if you leave a comment down below, if you have any questions of anything I haven't um, I haven't answered, you know, I will try and answer that in the comments down below. I try to reply to everybody. If I don't reply to you, I probably missed your comment, but I'll reply later. I there was a woman in another video that commented, and I didn't notice it till like four days afterwards. I felt so bad, but I finally went back and replied to her. So, um, you know, I will always try to comment back, because you are important to us. So, um, but please consider subscribing. It really makes us feel good when you're willing to subscribe and if you like the videos i'm putting out please ring that notification bell so you're notified every time i put a new video up and the content that i'm doing if you enjoy that if you enjoy watching corby play or things like that please consider giving it a thumbs up it really lets us know you care and it also lets youtube know that you like what we do um, the thumbs up besides subscriptions thumbs up are a major way that the YouTube company 